Welcome, Great Nines. I hope that we are comfortable with simple interest now, both the long way and with using the formula. Now we're going to learn about compound interest. And as I said to you, simple interest doesn't really operate in the real world. Compound interest, however, is used throughout the world by all of our banks in terms of investments or in terms of loans. And so let's make sure that we really understand what's very different about compound interest. Today we're going to be looking at doing this the slightly longer way, but it shows us that we really understand what it means for compound interest. And then tomorrow we'll look at using the compound interest formula, the shortcut for doing these problems. So let's look at what compound interest means. We calculate interest at the end of each compounding period. Now that could be per year, per month, quarter, half year, or even daily. So at the end of every month, if you look at your bank statement, your bank statement will have a tiny little amount there that says you've earned this much interest per month. Often businesses work in quarters, so they might earn interest in quarters. But for our purposes in grade 9, we're only going to be calculating interest yearly. Remember, we calculated the simple interest per year. So now we're going to be looking at compound interest per year. What does this mean for us is that, well, compound interest, we can earn interest on the total amount, all of the money in my bank account. Therefore, each time we calculate interest or add it in there, that interest is going to be more than the previous time. So the phrase to remember, in compound interest, we can earn interest on our interest. Remember that in simple interest, we had the same amount of interest every year. Okay, let's go and look at a works example of calculating annual compound interest. Okay, let's look at this very simple example. And with nice numbers like this, we should be able to get our heads into this idea quite quickly. So suppose we have 100 Rand and the bank is paying us a nice interest rate of 10% per annum. That means, well, 10% of 100 is going to be 10 Rand, 10 out of 100 for that first year. So if this was simple interest, it's going to stay as 10 Rand every year. But if we're now using compound interest, which is what they do, in the second year, our opening balance, our balance at the beginning of the year is 110 Rand. So we get to earn 10% of that amount. 10% of 110 is 11 Rand. So therefore, we get a whole extra one round of interest. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but just wait and see what happens. The graph shows this. So in the graph, we can see at the beginning, year zero, we have 100 rand. That's our money. By the end of the first year, the bank has paid us 10 rands worth of interest. So there's my total of 110 rand. Now, this 110, I'm entitled to earn interest on all of that. There's the 11 rand, the extra amount of interest I earn for that year too. So if I add on that 11 rand onto my balance of 110 rand, we get 121 rand after two years. The following year, our balance is now 121 rand. So we get to earn 10% of this amount. 10% of 121 is 12 rand and 10 cents. So let's go and draw the picture. What does this third year's interest look like on the graph? So we're going to start off, so here's my 100 Rand, that was my original investment. And then we're going to add on, well we've got the two lots of interest that we earned, and 11 Rand. So now we're going to go and add on an extra, this amount here of 12 Rand, 10 cents. So we had the 10 Rand, then we had 11 Rand, now we've got 12 Rand and 10 cents. Now in three years, we're not really going to be able to see how much this grows. But this, grade nines, is an example of what we call exponential growth. So initially, our money might grow quite slowly, but then, given enough time, suddenly we're going to see that with exponential growth, over the time, our amount of money, our total amount of money, is going to get much, much, much larger. And when we talk about exponential growth, exponential growth doesn't just work with compound interest. This is a great idea for lots of things that grow exponentially. Now, with all this talk of COVID-19, the reason that we've all had to go into lockdown is because the growth of the virus, coronavirus, it spreads exponentially. In fact, we can talk about the rate of expansion. And the scary thing is how quickly this virus grows.
So understanding compound interest will allow us one day to also understand things like compound growth. Okay, so let's look at this table here that shows how our 100 Rand is going to grow for 10 years. And so let's go and look at how this table works. So if we look in this table in our first year, when we started off at the beginning of the year with 100 Rand, then we earned that 10% of that 10 Rand and our balance at the end of the first year was 110 Rand. Then in the second year, we started off and remember we earned that extra one Rand. There's my balance. So we earn 11 Rand of interest. Notice how it increases. And that resulted in me having 121 Rand left. Then we started the year off with 121 Rand and then this was the new thing we drew into the graph, which is that we earned 12 Rand 10. So our balance at the end of that third year would have been 133 Rand and 10 cents. Now start to notice at what happens with our interest as we go up. Notice by the end of this year you're earning 23 Rand. That's over twice the amount of interest we earned in that first year. And my balance at the end of 10 years is 259 Rand. Compare that to what happened with simple interest. Well, with simple interest, we would have only earned 10 Rand every year. So after 10 years, we would have had 100 Rand, which was my initial investment, plus 10 times 10 Rand, which would have given me 200 Rand exactly. So compare this to the difference that compound interest makes. Just in 10 years, I've earned an extra 59 Rand. Now, obviously, we're going to hope to start off with more than 100 Rand. And if we started off with 100,000 Rand, we've earned an extra 59,000 Rand in interest. But again, in the scale of compound interest, 10 years is not a very long time. We really want to be leaving things for much longer than that. So now that we've got our head into how compound interest works, let's look at going and doing some examples. So Alyssa is depositing 3,000 Rand. So that's her initial amount. The bank is paying her 8.2% and now we see we're working out with compound interest. Calculate how much she has after 4 years. So now we need to go and do this manually. Alright, so what's going to happen in the first year? Well, she's going to start off with 3,000 Rand. And we're going to add then 8.2% of that 3,000 Rand. So if we go and type that into our calculator, we see that we get... 3,246 Rand. But now, if you go back to exercise 1 and exercise 2, we know there's a shorter way to increase 3,000 Rand by 8,2%. And that way is to say, well, we can multiply by 108,2%. So check with me now that you get the same answer. We started off with 3,000 Rand and we multiplied it just in one shot by 108%. We see that we get that same amount of 3,246 Rand. So this shorter method, we're really encouraging you to use it now with compound interest because we need to go and increase this amount four times. We're going to go and work as compound interest out four times. So what happens in year two? In year two, now we get to earn interest on all of my money. I'm starting off with 3,246 Rand for an extra 246 Rand. And I'm going to increase it by 108%, which is adding on 8% of that amount of money. And we see there that we get 3,512 Rand and 17 cents. So in year three now, we bring this amount of money to say, well, I get to earn interest in compound interest. We earn interest on all of that money. So we're going to add 8,2% onto it. We're going to multiply by 108,2% to give our new total at the end of year three. So our calculator tells us that we've got 3,800 Rand. Now we should also be using all the decimals here because we want to earn interest on every single possible little fraction of a cent that's in our bank account. So finally, one more time, the fourth year, we bring this balance at the end of year three as our opening balance for year four. So we get to earn interest on all of this money, 3,817 Rand. And we see that at the end of four years, I've got 4,111 Rand and 78 cents. So that is the total amount of money 
she has in her account after four years with compound interest. I'm going to show you what, how you can use your calculator and in particular the answer button on your calculator to work this out very quickly. What we see here is that every year we're going to be taking our previous answer and multiplying that by 108%. So we're going to use our answer key to represent our closing balance at the end of the last year. The first time we only get 3,000 Rand. So if I push equals, well now this number is inside my answer key. So from this point on, I can take my answer times 108.2 over 100. That's going to give me my new total with 8% added. So if we look here in our calculations, we're going to get 3,246. Now, the beautiful thing about this answer key is that this is my new answer. So if I take this number and I, melt, and I push equals again, it's going to give me 3,512 Rand. Notice that's the balance at the end of the second year. If I push answer again, it gives me the balance at the end of the third year. If I push equals again, it gives me the balance at the end of the fourth year, 4,101 Rand. Now, you still have to show all of your working out to us as teachers. This just saves you entering all these numbers every single time if, you make, if this makes sense to you. Okay, let's look at the last example. 19 borrows, 30,000 Rand. So this is a loan she's borrowing. Put to go on a tennis tour. The bank charges her interest at 9,6% compounded. So now we're going to have to read these stories carefully to see that these are compound interest problems. How much interest does Nadine have to pay the bank back after three years? Now we have to be very careful here because the amount of interest every year is not constant. So we can't just work this out once and multiply it by three. What we're going to have to do is to find the total amount of her loan that she needs to repay. And then we subtract the original loan amount, and that's going to give us the interest that she paid. This is the only way to do this problem. So, let's go and see now, what is the total amount she's going to have to pay back after four years? So, in year one, she started off with 30,000 Rand, and we're going to multiply that by our new interest rate, 109,6 over 100, and this will give her the total amount she owes after one year, which our calculator tells us is 32,880 Rand. Then remember, we need to take this amount, and that becomes our opening balance for year two. So now she owes 32,880, and they're going to charge her interest on all of that money. So the fact that it's a loan doesn't change anything in how we calculate this. Right, we see that at the end of the second year, when we type this into our calculator, so 36,036 Rand with 48 cents. Again, we bring this number down to say in the third year, well, she's going to have to pay interest on all of that money. So 36,036 Rand with 48 cents multiplied by 109,6 over 100. And at the end of three years, she owes 39,495 Rand and 98 cents. So therefore, this is the question. How much interest? The interest would be the difference. It's going to be this 39,495 Rand, 98 cents, and minus her original amount that she borrowed, 30,000 Rand, tells us the amount of interest she paid over three years is 9,495 Rand and 98 cents. Now notice that she only paid 2,800 in her first year. So the amount of interest every year went up. Okay, I hope that you have a feeling now for just how very different compound interest works. If we're investing, it's going to work for us. We're going to earn interest on our interest. But if we're borrowing money, then it's going to work against us. The longer I keep that money, the more interest every year they charge me. All right, so now you need to go and do exercise five. It looks like it's a short exercise, but remember these calculations are quite long because you need to show what happens every single year with compound interest. 
Good luck.